Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning to Afghanistan 11, the newest game out by every single soldier. It is the spiritual sequel to Vietnam 65, and it looks at the Afghanistan war and uh, tasks you as an American commander with the act of winning the hearts and mind of the Afghanistani people between things like building infrastructure, killing the Taliban, eliminating militia as a threat, clearing IEDs, providing supplies to various villages, and uh, just in general, uh, making life better because you are there than if you were not. This is the fourth part of a Let's Play series that was from a live stream. It seems to be a bit of a trend lately. Uh, the audio and everything is coming from a live stream. Uh, this, this battle is not going well, but I did want to share my experiences because I thought it would be somewhat worth it. It does show the game is very challenging, and, and this was one of my first attempts to play the game, so it's by no, mean, no means a polished effort. Uh, this very much shows off uh, the challenges that the game uh, ensues. You can see there on the top of the screen that our uh, hearts and minds score is a 46. In this scenario, we need to keep it at 50 or above. Basically, that's your popularity within this map and this region, and you have 60 turns to do it, so there's still quite a bit of time left, but we're running low on political capital as well, so to operate effectively, you need to have political capital. That's the 1565 number to the right of where it says turn 16 up near the top. The lower that is, the less you're able to do as the Americans. The more accomplishments you have, like destroying enemy units and other things like that, the more political capital you can gain. But everything you do uses capital up as well, so you kind of have to balance things. And in this game, uh, things are not going well. You can see there our Chinook just got shot at, and it cost us 800 uh, political capital just for that. And then just a fly cost another 50 political capital. This is a tough game. It's a challenging game, but it's worth the challenge, I think. I think if you put time into it, you will find that uh, it is a very interesting game. Uh, but with all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to jump out of this and get back into the live stream audio uh, because I, I hope you guys will enjoy that and this is all taken while I was playing. One other last tidbit, this game is not out yet. It comes out March 23rd. It will be on Steam, but it is also available directly through Matrix and Slytherin Games. So if this is something that looks interesting to you, let me know below and obviously keep your eyes open because it's just a couple of weeks away. Uh, one other thing, um, let me know if you want to see more of this game. I, I do have a preview copy, thankfully, thanks to Matrix. So if this is something you guys want to see more videos on, just let me know, and I will definitely accommodate that. Anyway, guys, enjoy the show, and let me know what you think down below. Probably should be, but... Ugh. This is such a, a, a deceiving scenario. You get your two supply trucks there right away, and it's like, Oh, yeah, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to win. And then, you know... You realize, oh wait, no, you've actually got to still convince people to like you or something. Ooh. Oh, for fuck's sake, where are you taking fire from? Why can't I destroy this thing? Alright, so... Why didn't he destroy it? He can't destroy it this turn. So we're taking fire, but I don't know exactly where he's injured. Again, don't know exactly where. I have to end this turn. Alright. Hmm. Alright, so destroying an opium crop will get the pro get the protesters off our back. I don't know um these guys calling a a warthog strike. Well these guys are just regular infantry. They can't. The other guys are special forces, but they've already fought. Got a chopper I can hit him with. Shoot him from range. Always shoot from range. That's a quick lesson I'm learning. And there you go. A little bit of uh, a small victory there. So we destroyed an opium crop and we destroyed an enemy militia unit. I'd consider that a pretty successful turn thus far. Um, 
now the question is, where's... There was the Taliban over here. Where did they go? They're probably sitting in ambush somewhere along this road. Pull that husky into the base. Oh, there they are! We spotted them! Alright, let's use our artillery. Our mortars don't seem to be very effective against them. Can we... Let's do this instead. I like Warty the Warthog, so we'll zoom out so we can see the guy fly over. There he goes! And they made it away. Jerks. They still lived. Um, what about our mortars? Or Apaches, or something. Our Chinook is damaged. Is still in range of our mortars? Yes. Yeah, we got him! Alright. So, all in all, this turned out to be a pretty successful turn. I'm sure I'm tempting some fate by saying that, but... Where's our buffalo? Let's rebuild that, that road. Okay. Moving back here. Logistics is where I'm really failing. That's... That's the area that I'm struggling in. Alright, we've got this guy over here. We'll go ahead and drop him in this village with the Afghani troops. Village no. No one likes you is basically... Basically the moral of the story. No one likes us in Western Afghanistan right now. Even the, their own Afghani soldiers. They're just traitors in their eyes. But at least we're getting everybody's true colors out. They're all supporting the local warlords. <sighs> Let's take a look at intelligence here. Where are we at? Now, the nice thing is, the enemy had over 10 units not that long ago, so we've reduced them to only 2 and 2. They've got a lot of opium crops, 32 engagements, about a 60% success rate, 11 US, or 16 US casualties. Um, yeah. Things could and probably should be going better. The mightiest army on the face of the earth. Maintenance yard refuels vehicles. Okay. Um, can my buffalo do that right now? Do I still have enough action points? Yeesh. Or not. Oh, I don't have the points for it. Damn. 750 plus 750 for additional extensions. So... So this one's an artillery pit, and I think I have an artillery pit and what? What's this? No, I do have a maintenance yard. So why isn't it repairing him? Shouldn't it be repairing him if I've got a maintenance yard? Or refueling him? Um. Oh, wait. You need a maintenance yard at a fob to refuel vehicles. Otherwise, they refuel at one per turn, ended at the base. They're building roads. Yep. I need to get UN aid to him as well. Still got some time. We're only 17 turns in, but the pendulum is going to be difficult to reverse with our political points where they're at. So, I should put my vehicle at the maintenance yard. That makes more sense. But we'll see. I'm assuming that should fix it. Yep, it did. Okay, there you go. Who would have thought you should put embassy bombed? Oh, great. Hearts and minds and political points are decreased again. Um, let's call it... Wait, what's this do? Deploy observation post. Uh, no. No, we don't need to do that. Let's just call in the warthog again. That's my favorite part so far. It's just listening to that sweet, sweet purr of the warthog's main guns. And they slowly fall and die and roll down the, roll down the hill. Alright. So back to... All right, let's get you guys... Actually, an observation post up here might... I, don't, I kind of feel like you... Uh, All right, so you can see this is... All right. Okay, well, thank you. I believe the developer just gave me some tips in the game, which is if you want to refuel units, they need to be in a maintenance yard. They can also be repaired if they're in a maintenance yard. I'm assuming you're limited to one there per turn, or is there a stacking penalty? It looks like it. Um... But that's fine, uh, which actually gives you a you know a real strong incentive to build multiple maintenance yards if you really want something to be your main sort of operations uh, operational base. 
I'm really curious where that technical went. These guys are low on rations. We need to get them back to the base. Man, I kind of want to restart the scenario now, now that I, I know that's how maintenance yards worked. I just assumed if you built an extension, you got, you know, the benefit of that extension, regardless of whether you were in that hex. But it makes a lot more sense that you've got to put them in the hex. Okay. Wish we could artillery the opium crop. We do have some troops over here. We get them up that way? Yeah, it's going to take three turns. All right. So that village is pro-US. Good to see. Good to see. I'm going to go ahead and pick these guys up. And fly back to the base. And you can see here we're not doing very well political points-wise. I know. Technical! Man, those militia keep going back to that base. Ooh, a lot of Taliban. Alright. Well, we've got airstrikes available. I don't think we have enough political points to call it in. No, we don't. Okay. So, what are we going to do? First thing, hit them with mortars. They're in range. Alright, so we wounded them, so that's good. The other good thing is they ran away somewhere that we can still see them. Now we've got these guys. We can call in another A-10 Warthog strike, so we're going to do that. I love that the Warthogs are free. They're destroyed, so there you go. These guys are sitting in ambush. Do we have our uh, Apache? So we'll engage these guys from range. Man, there's a lot of, a lot of bad guys around right now. Well, I'm keeping my hex away so they can't shoot at me. Hit them at range so I can shoot them. Alright. Do these guys special forces also? Doesn't look like they can... Oh, I ran you the wrong way. Doesn't look like they can call in A-10s when they're as damaged as they are. Eh, missed. Um, he's already fought. He needs to get back to get fixed. I can throw some troops on Blackhawks, maybe, and get out in front of them. Let's do that. Go ahead and land the troop. I don't want to fly over with these ambushing. Hopefully they can't hit from that range. No! Damn it! Oh... Oh boy. This is where I need those B-52s it mentions. Oh nice, we got him. Got those guys too. Yeah, you run away. Oh, only one A-10 strike per turn. That makes sense. So our buffalo is fixed. We'll move him back here. Now our chopper can go get fixed. Alright. I don't want to leave my Apache out. Well, he's going to have to lay out. Never mind. Alright. That was a pretty decent turn. But again, the hearts and minds are more important than 
anything. And right now we're definitely on a path to lose this game. Um, hmm. All right. I'm going to check in with the chat. I may stop streaming this at the moment. I know I've been going for about an hour, but it is 1 o'clock my time on a Sunday night. And I do, uh, I have tomorrow off, but I actually have some stuff going on in the morning. Um, I'll check in with the chat and I'll uh, think about continuing. Otherwise, I may take a... Uh, May take an early, early leave here, but uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, post them in the chat. Looks like the developer is also in the chat, so please feel free uh, to ask any questions you have about the game. So far, I'm really enjoying my time with it. It's got a little bit of a learning curve. Um, I came to it from Vietnam 65, and this game, in my opinion, is much more robust. I really enjoy that. I like Vietnam 65 in its own way, but I, I really love... Uh, kind of the approach that the game is taking with Afghanistan. Um, and uh, so far, so so far, so good. I mean, I've only looked at one scenario, obviously. Um, but uh, it's certainly challenging. That's that's uh, definitely apparent. Um, but challenging in a, in a good way. Um, anyway, guys, I'll be right back. Let me know your thoughts, uh, comments in the uh, chat. And um, I'll, I'll think about whether we're going to continue or not. I just need a quick quick break. I don't know exactly what flags mean specifically. Um, I'd need to look back through the manual. I don't have it memorized. Uh, my basic understanding is it means you probably want to check the village out. Uh, that it, it could provide, you know, they may have intelligence. Uh, maybe their loyalty is suspect and you don't know, like, where their current loyalty lies. But essentially, kind of the tires burning to me indicates that you should probably pay the village a visit. Uh, if I had a more thoughtful approach to the way I was playing, it would definitely be something that I would be keeping an eye on. But as I'm kind of still getting to learn, you know, getting to, to know the game and getting to learn it, um, you know, I haven't been as, as aggressive there. And, and there you can see in the chat, fires mean intel is available. So like I said, means you want to pay a visit from a gameplay perspective, want to pay a visit to the town uh, because you have some reason to believe that there is intelligence available at the, at the location. All right, guys, that was a bit of a shorter video. As you can see here, our hearts and minds score continues to plummet. We're down to 41, and I know I mentioned in this video I was debating whether to continue the scenario. I'm thinking about doing another playthrough specifically talking about this battle's history as well as kind of my strategy and maybe recording it offline and sharing it so I can give, uh, give a little bit more of a proficient example of maybe how to play the scenario. There's also one other scenario in the game that comes with the preview version I may jump into. If this is something that you guys want to see me continue. Uh, but this is going to be it for this particular fight. We lost. Uh, I'm surrendering. I'm throwing in the towel. You know, the people are protesting back home. And the historical gamer is, is going to be fired. He may even be sent to, to Fort Leavenworth uh, uh, due to treason for performing so poorly in this battle. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts below as always. And until next time, this is the historical gamer saying thank you for watching and I'm out.